Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss how Kamala Harris approached her first major interview as the Democrat candidate for this year's US presidency. She's been notably avoiding the mainstream media, which has actually worked out well for her so far, but she couldn't do it forever. And it left questions about how her campaign would be affected once she did start to have to carry out interviews like this. But after Thursday, it looks like Harris has a game plan, which is working. She not only dealt with the interview quite well, but there was one particular moment which seems to be the defining event which worked out very well for her and uh, not so well for Trump. The CNN interviewer asked about Trump's bizarre rambling during his own interview by black journalists earlier this summer. Trump had expressed confusion. He's not unusual. He's confused about a lot of things. But he expressed confusion about Harris's ethnicity, saying, well, I, 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 thought, I thought she was Indian and now she's black. She suddenly decided to be black. And, and everyone was going, she suddenly decided to be black? What? It's not something that confuses anyone else, by the way, including other Republicans. It's like, yeah, her father's black, her mother's Indian. It's like, do you... Do, this, this confuses no one in the world other than the orange one. All in all, it wasn't a great move by Trump. Uh, it was largely ridiculed. I really can't understand why anyone would want to bring it up again. But for whatever reason, this interviewer, CNN, decided to ask Harris about it. And Harris simply responded that, oh, same old tired playbook, next question, please. That's it, the interviewer asked. That's it, Harris said. And this response works well in a couple of ways. First, it's just a good way to respond to stupid questions. This was a very stupid question. This aspect of Harris's ethnicity is not a talking point in the election. Sometimes there are what you might call stupid talking points. There are things that it's like, look, this isn't real. This isn't a real problem. It's not a real issue. But voters think it is. So you have to treat it seriously. This isn't something voters think. That's not what they're talking about. It's not even something the Republican Party is trying to push. They don't think there's, there's any capital to be gained here. The entire issue only came about because Donald Trump was riffing. And as usual when he does this, he came out with a blindingly stupid statement. This is the same man who wondered aloud if maybe we should inject COVID sufferers with bleach. Remember that. And his brain is even softer now than it was then. And because it's not a real talking point, Harris had absolutely no reason to answer it. It would be good if more politicians understood this. Far too often, the default politician is for uh, the, the default position is for politicians to dignify all questions from the media as if they're serious. Every now and then, you will get a politician who, like Harris here, makes it clear: "Look, this question is ridiculous." Whether they do it politely or not, here Harris was very polite. I may not have been quite so diplomatic. I think I'd have preferred the response. Don't you have any real questions left on your sheet? But Harris's way is probably better. And part of why it works is an understanding of who Harris is speaking to while carrying out the interview. Because you may say that politicians could just use the same technique for relevant questions that they would just rather not answer. They could just dismiss anything. as oh, That's not a serious question. In fact, a lot of times politicians do that. And after, actually, when you look at politicians who do dismiss questions from the media as well, oh, that's not a serious question, I'm not going to answer it. Most of the time, it is actually a serious question that the politician doesn't want to answer. But if it's a question that key voters care about, they will then come across as dismissive and evasive. So it's not the sort of technique a politician can really abuse. Because any politician who wants to use this has to be clear in their own, in their own head what sort of voters they're targeting and what are those voters interested in. And if they dismiss something they're interested in, that will come across badly for them. A big part of where the Conservatives went wrong in this country this year is that they needed to talk about the NHS and the economy. Their own strategist, Sonak's own strategist, was saying, you need the professional ones, that is, you need to talk about the NHS and the economy. But Sonak kept defaulting to culture wars. So they avoided talking about the issues that mattered most to key voters. But if you're being asked about something that's irrelevant to the voters, that you need to appeal to. Politicians should absolutely bat away those questions. Key target voters in swing states, they're not interested in Trump's random statements about race. So it was easily dismissed by Harris. And the second way in which this response worked out for her is, in my view, it's because it made quite a good talking point. There will be policy areas where Harris may feel a little vulnerable. It's notable that she's not talking in detail about a lot of these policies. You know, a lot of her campaign is, is, is very, it's very vibe-based rather than policy-based, I would say. 
you know, I've said in the past. And this is because the orange one isn't forcing her to talk about policy. So why would she in detail? I mean, in the same interview, Harris had to defend the fact that the government she aims to lead won't have quite the same policies as she has had personally in the past. Now, this is normal. I keep trying to make the same point myself about politics in this country. It's the same everywhere. A democratically elected head of government is not an autocratic monarch. You know, they cannot just adopt policy that they think are the best. A head of government will adopt policies that they personally don't think are good policies. They have to adopt policies that have enough support to be implemented. But a lot of ordinary voters don't think of it in those terms. They sort of expect that the head of government is deciding everything and so will make those decisions based exclusively on their own beliefs. So questions like that can be a bit awkward where you highlight a difference between what uh, a person has said in the past and what their position is now. It's like, ooh, why have you changed your position? They may not have changed the position. They may just be recognising political reality. But if lots of people are talking about how Harris dealt with a stupid question about an even stupider statement from an even stupider presidential candidate, then that means not as many people are talking about some of the more serious questions. It also emphasises a few positives for Harris as well. It helps paint her as a no-nonsense politician because she just dealt with it. She didn't mess about. There's no beating around the bush. It was like... Stupid question, move on. Someone who is less about the show and more about getting things done. After all, a president who won't waste time with stupid questions from a journalist will presumably not waste time with stupid objections from anyone involved with policy implementation, for example. Also, it makes Trump look both... It reminds people of Trump's stupidity. I say it look, makes Trump look stupid. The original statement made him look stupid. It reminds people how dumb he is and also explains how irrelevant he is. This was Harris dismissing what her opponent had to say. She wasn't interested. Oh, I'm not, I'm not interested in what he's got to say. It's not worth discussing. So all in all, I would say that was... It, the interview itself, I think, was, was well handled. It wasn't a brilliant interview, but it was well handled. But just this point, just that one way she dealt with that one stupid question, immensely useful to her. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to discuss the channel further. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.